Thank you so much for being here. I totally enjoyed the presentations, the keynotes. And I don't say it because I'm here, of course, but because I'm, I'm more a Gianluca Diegoli kind of person. So I don't have a lot of passion, or I mean, I have a lot of them, but I'm not very constant on them. So I just, you know, I have too many stimuli. And then maybe you can help me and help everybody just to understand how to cope with all the I mean, so many opportunities, so little time. Uh, I mean, the need to balance uh, and to choose uh, about our passions because sometimes we feel a little bit overwhelmed. I have to say I don't have any passion, but it's wrong because uh, actually I, I, I like reading. I mean, maybe, you know, you can say it's not a real passion, just like running or uh, it's something that you normally do. But I found uh, a lot of uh, help on the web uh, with the uh, social reading platforms such as Anobi, Goodreads, and stuff like that, just to you know, share the pleasure of reading uh, with a lot of other people. And uh, I love cooking. I love food. And uh, everybody knows that food is very, very big on the web, even too much. So we were joking with Alessio before this uh, panel because it was just like, uh, I'm a journalist, I've been a journalist uh, for many years, I wrote a lot of very important articles and I did uh, beautiful interview, interviews and now I'm famous because I'm a runner and I'm a photographer, <laughs> which I mean is not my first uh, job. In this panel we're trying to, first of all, set a balance between uh, you know, your time, your life, uh, your job and your passions. Uh, and we're talking about passion that uh, are not your job. Maybe they can become your job if you're very lucky. Because I mean, if you can have a job that is a passion, it's amazing, isn't it? But it's not very, very common. It's not very easy to, to achieve. And uh, I'd like also to talk about uh, the, the possibility for a passion to help building your online reputation as a professional, just like Alessio did a lot. And also Alessandra as well, because uh, I guess that all, I mean, all the passion and the, your multitasking life helped you in consulting, which is your main job. Um, being a mother, and uh, I want to, to start with Daniel, because Daniel is an artist, but uh, most of all is an educator. And he, worked, he works a lot with teenagers, helping them to understand what their passion are, what their talents, what their, their talents are. Because if, as a grown-up, we feel some, sometimes overwhelmed by possibilities offered by the web, I can imagine uh, being a teenager right now and uh, having to face all these new opportunities, which are great because I'd love to, to have them when I was a child. I mean, I, I wish I had them, all these possibilities, but I think it's not easy. And you told me before that maybe you need to, to rebalance the time spent online with the time spent offline to help them to understand what the real talent are. Can you, can you just tell us in, in which ways you do it with teenagers? Um, yeah, fine. Uh, I'd like to address the, this thought, this question, uh, as um, kind of realizing that, you know, on, online everybody is so happy, is so creative, is posting their uh, achievements, and, uh, and we as adults, you know, it, it's great to use tools to, to, to find your passion, to realize it, to measure it, to share it even. But, but I think we have to realize for teenagers um, and for, for children, this could be extremely ov overwhelming. And, and this filter of just posting your happy moments of life creates this uh, a, a distorted vision of, of, um, of the complexity and range of emotions that... Uh, um, that exists in your daily life. So if everybody is so happy, what do I do with these moments that I, I don't feel empowered? Now, um, so this is one aspect to, uh, to notice that, that social networks are uh, kind of a construct of a self that essentially uh, um, can lead to what Sherry Turkle uh, talks about, kind of to being alone together. Yeah. And, and, and you cannot quantify uh, uh, compassion, you cannot uh, quantify uh, 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 acknowledgement you know, that you do get from uh, immediate uh, contact. Now, uh, regarding uh, my work with students, art students, with teenagers in various contexts, um, 
I do have a method, a way to approach it, and, and uh, in, in a way, the big challenge for, for, for an adolescent is you know, to find his own voice. You know, what is interesting for me? How do I find that passion? Everybody's doing that great stuff. I mean, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed. Too much competition, maybe. Competition and, and success stories. I mean, even when you have on Facebook, someone says, today I'm sad, you know, it's kind of just kind of squeezing a bit of, of, of attention, but that's not the complexity of really having, you know, maybe a lousy day or a lousy week or, or even more. And what I like to ignite the possibility to, to, to explore and to be surprised and to, to, to really find an empowered ability to, to choose your passion is um, creating groups where you sit together in a circle in a kind of a very immediate surrounding and not imagining and not knowing what's going to be the outcome. So, okay, so you don't set any goal for No them. goals, no goals. I, I try to uh, uh, induce and facilitate a brainstorm session uh, which as a facilitator you have to be very, very sensitive and kind of uh, uh, supportive and kind of let it appear by itself. Just surface it. Yeah, surface it and encourage, but very, very, uh, in a way, sophisticated without kind of putting my ideas into it. And then when you have a process with, with, uh, with groups, uh, uh, the, again, these aha moments of, of, of making connections, of making discoveries, and making it their own. Not an app that says, okay, if you do this that way, you know, you are getting this kind of mark, but maybe realizing it in, in ways that they could not imagine when they started the process. Yeah. But uh, um, if I understood right, uh, your approach is not the one to separate online life uh, from offline, uh, but just to help them to, to reflect on their own. Yeah, uh, absolutely. There is, there is no separation. Um, what I'm trying to, to do and to establish, and that's maybe kind of a way to, 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 to see how to balances is to think about information and our mind in a new kind of ecology. So obviously the problem is not information, is not technology, it's another new form of consumption, which what I was talking about in my previous uh, lecture, but if we think about it in a sustainable way, in a way that you can really see how to balance it uh, as a new sort of ec ecology, that, that would be a, a very uh, interesting way to approach uh, the overwhelming and hyper-connected and the overload of information. Totally, and also to, to exploit it in the right way, to use it in the right way, in a better way for them. Because sometimes we think that they are they so-called native digital and they know everything about it. The, the reality is just they know about technology and how to use the device. Exactly, and obviously the, the connection between data and information into knowledge, it, 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 it's a it's a, it's a vast field to, to see how to make an idea come through. Yeah. How to make the, the knowledge that you can, uh, or the information that you consume into an understanding. And that, uh, uh, there's a very, very uh, uh, important understanding that that's what you do many times when you're offline, when you're in between, when you're bored. It's, it's, it's a process called like, uh, the mental pause. That's a moment when you can reflect, when you have that quiet moment where you can process a lot of the information that you were kind of exposed to and, and you can process it into your individual uh, outcome. Yeah, thank you so much. And I realize that I, I, I do have an armchair, that's why we were so close. Uh, so maybe I just leave you on, <laughs> on the sofa, probably it's better like that. Okay. <laughs> I just, I just love you so much. I just, uh, I just want you to stay very close all together in, in the sofa, but it's really, it's really hot inside. So what do you think about it? What do you think about it? You're, you're both parents, uh, so you, you do have a lot of passions, but uh, you have also children, and so you see the ways in which they are developing their passions online. What do you think about uh, their approach uh, to, to passion? Well, Thanks to online, of course. So. I think uh, I found very interesting uh, your um, reflection about uh, um, bearing frustration. Because to learn something, 
uh, you need to pass through frustration. That's true. I remember when I learned to dance tango, it takes a lot of time. And I think I spent two years just walking around in the milonga with no enjoyment. Uh, no, uh, it was an horrible thing to, to look at. Uh, even if I didn't want to perform on stage, of course, I just want to be able to dance and enjoy to, it. To and do relax. something. To, yeah. And, but it, anyway, it took a lot of time and of effort. Uh, and I think that um, maybe it was one of the few times that I um, was able to bear such a frustration because I, I wanted it so much. And I think that uh, this is um, to, the, the ability to bear frustration is uh, really one of the most important things with children. I, if I think of my, uh, I have a boy, uh, a, ch a child is uh, uh, nine years old, and that's true what you say. Um, as, um, as soon as he can't do some, something, he is uh, rather frustrated, and it's difficult for me not to help him. But I think that that's, it's, uh, yes, the, the right things to do. And uh, um, I was reflecting while you were speaking, because um, that's true, online we are always uh, on stage in a way. And sometimes it's important also to share frustration, to yeah. share things when you are not to, able to do to that. Share yeah, well. To share failure as well. To share failure, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that this helps yourself and other people more than sharing success, in a way. Probably, yeah. If yeah. you are humble enough uh, yeah. <laughs> to share frustration and failure, which is not easy. Yeah, my two children are too young uh, to um, surf the, the internet, I mean, but they use technology. And uh, this, is, this is one point, anyway. They use technology since they were uh, um, one and a half year old because they had touched technology, yeah. which opens technology to people who cannot read. No, and this is, this is the first step. You know, I mean, uh, they are uh, used to um, interact with any kind of technology after a few seconds because for, they, for them it's natural. And yes, they are not able, yet today they are four and six years old, six years old. They are not able to stay, uh, stay still. I mean, to, to do nothing. And it's it, great part is because of me and, and their mother because when they say, Papa, I'm bored, uh, what can I do? I don't know. Please uh, look, uh, look at the, um, watch the television or play. Just play with your with your brother. And I'm using this. Yeah. So uh, it uh, fills my life at every time, and so does with the, with them. Um, on the other side, I think that they are augmented, as I was saying, saying before, in, in many ways because. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have the picture here, but Mattia, which is the older one, is so used to this kind of uh, visual communication that one day, just to tell me that it wanted, uh, it, it didn't want to uh, eat, um, it was, how do you say pollo? Chicken. <laughs> chicken, chicken. Uh, okay. He didn't want to eat chicken. He made a PowerPoint with his uh, <laughs> la sua lavagnetta, come si chiama? This board. The board, yeah. He, he drew a power, a perfect PowerPoint, telling me action after action that he didn't want. He, he couldn't <laughs> write, and but he made something so complex. So yeah. you a, see, on a storyboard, not to a eat storyboard, chicken. Exactly. <laughs> on one side, you see they are frustrated by no, by doing nothing. On the other side, they, you see they are augmented in their way in the way they. Uh, perceive and then explains reality and then interact with it. So I think we are too young, every one of us. Uh, it's too early to understand how yeah. deep this is affecting us and our children. Um, and still, I don't, have, I don't have an answer, but I keep thinking that the, the good things are more than the bad things. But we need control, as you said. No? We, need, we need to stay with them and to follow them day by day, learning with them. You know, about four years ago, I had the chance to ask to many internet gurus, doctors, uh, Tim O'Reilly, um, Marissa Meyer, the same question. How would you manage the approach to the internet 
of your children? And what would be your advice to uh, analogic parents? And the, the strange thing was that there were 15, 15, 15 of them, so I got 15 answers. Uh, the one was different. Totally. So we have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> we have That's no idea, totally. Yeah. That's the point. But it's very interesting, the thing that we, we all agree that, I mean, uh, uh, for, uh, for living passions and for learning and understand new things and finding uh, people to share interest. Uh, you have a runner in Genoa, you're living in Rome, uh, and you share a great interest and you can do it all together. Uh, our children will have a lot of devices and tools that we didn't have. So yeah, the good things are by far more than the bad, I guess, and I hope. Uh, now I'd like to, to, to ask you another question, and the first uh, who wants can answer, of course. Um, for, uh, for my job, let's say one of my jobs, because uh, as, uh, as everyone here, I guess, uh, we have many jobs and many job titles. You're a cook. Yeah, okay, the, the, one, yeah the one when I cook. No, uh, when I act as a journalist, <laughs> I had the luck to interview uh, a lot of gurus of digital age, of uh, digital media and stuff. And I asked them the same questions, just like you did uh, to the 15 people you mentioned before. And uh, of course I asked them, uh, what is the secret to win on social media? What is the, you know, the, your secret or your secret recipe and stuff? And they answered me a lot of different things, but uh, the, the things that was in common to everyone, uh, I mean, different people, different gender, age, uh, attitude, uh, and cultures uh, as well, was human touch. You need to have a human touch, just like Springsteen would say. So <laughs> we all agree with him. And uh, in your keynote, uh, every, every, everyone, in different ways, you mentioned this human touch we need to have. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the personal interaction that we, we need to develop together with digital attitude, of course. Uh, and. Uh, uh, you also mentioned, uh, maybe not, in your pre not, not a lot in your presentation, in your keynote, but we talked a lot about your being a photographer, your you know, starting to be a photographer, and at the very beginning, nobody wanted you in, a, in the same room because they were scared about being, uh, having a, a picture taken by you, and then, right now, everyone wants, is looking for you to have a pic. So, I mean... Uh, your human touch, your way to present yourself and your work in public, uh, I mean, uh, was a win-win in a way. And of course, Alessandra talked about different ways of living passion. What's, what the human touch you put uh, in living your passion online uh, and your work online as well? What's your, what is your uh, added value in what you do? Shall I? Okay. Um. Okay, by the way, let's say that I'm not sure I'm doing the right things. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Nobody I'm, is. I'm, I'm, exper <laughs> I'm experimenting, but uh, what I see is just that thanks to social, thanks to the way we interact today, uh, things have changed the same way for everyone is on the internet. I mean, they are institutions, they are corporations, they are single person living their private or public uh, life, they all have the same uh, challenge to be, to, uh, to, to have something real of quality to give to the others. I mean, if you, if you are a company, do not, you don't have a product, you can, uh, can, can be the best communicator ever, You've, you'll fail. If you are a, a, a photographer, if you are a journalist, if you are a cook, anyway, and you are the three of them, um, and you are not good at what you do. You got no chance of winning. You got no chance of surviving in the internet. So the first thing, in the first place, you got to have something, something to give. And then on that, build in a, in a way which is different. Uh, it depends on what you're, you're, you got. For example, photography. I found out this one. You, you were telling, uh, when I started, I was... Uh, no one know, know me, uh, knew me as a, as a photographer. So I started uh, taking pictures from far, using the, <laughs> the zoom, 
and some pictures then were good. Not all, as today, but some of them were good. And I started publishing them, and when I published them, I made all I could to let the people I, uh, I made a portrait of, that they, they were there. So they found themselves there, shared the, 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 the pictures, yeah. they went around, and they were happy with that. So day after day, picture after picture, event after event, concert after concert, I find out that, that there were many people knowing that I could take a good picture, if I'm lucky. And this changed the way uh, I, inter uh, I interact with people in a very deep yeah. way, because when I get into a place and I have my camera with me, there is a chance I can take a good photograph and there are people willing to be. So they don't go away, they don't hide, they don't su accept someone, they don't do like this. <laughs> and I, you know what I'm talking about. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> the only one. Um, so this is, uh, can, can, it, can it be translated as a virtuous cycle? Is, is it English? No, I, I, saw, I, I saw it somewhere. Yep. And you can build this in everything you do, you know, uh, experimenting. And the, 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 the real thing is that today we have a chance to build something like this in the fastest way ever. Because if I was a, an, a, um, a traditional photographer 20 years ago, it would have taken me 10 years, yep. 15 years, to let the people know who I am yeah. and create name. this yeah. environment, totally. this positive environment for my work. Today I have Facebook, I have Flickr, Pinterest, Instagram. I don't use Pinterest, but it's there. And I can reach people in a fast way and build an idea of me which is better than I am. I mean, I can sell it good, well. I'm not that photographer, but sometimes people think so. Yeah, you, you change the perception people uh, have about you in a very short time, in a very short time, which is uh, really good and really important. But first of all, because you had something to show. I mean, you weren't uh, fake. Let, let's, say. let's say this straight. I'm not a photographer. To be a photographer is another thing. Yeah. But I can do something, sometimes good, and it works, and I can sell it well because I'm using internet in the proper way. Yeah. That's the difference. You're using the right channel to, to show your work. Exactly which is very good. And you're not too much, you're not too auto-promoting yourself. Uh, I mean, you're very balanced. There's in always, the uh, there is always a, a boundary you, do not, you, uh, you, don't have you to must not trespass. cross, of course. And if you cross it, you discover it uh, all of a sudden. You, you, you know it because uh, all the, the environment around you changes suddenly. Yeah. People are not the way they were before and you understand that you are exaggerating. Yeah. yeah? Okay. How do you say you push, in English? You, 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 push, you push the limit okay, a little exactly. bit more. Yeah, as Boron in English, I don't know, but maybe you can find a translation. <laughs> okay. You want to add something, uh, Daniel, or...? Uh... Um, yeah, j just, just to say that, obviously, there's this great potential by linking, you know, life online and life offline. And uh, I'm just, I'm just, it's very important for me uh, to stress the difference between our life as grown-up professionals and uh, as opposed to, you know, the developing mind and the developing self, the ability to, to create an identity. We do that all the time, you know, we, we, I'm, I'm here and with one hat when I'm uh, teaching them another hat, and, and, and that's fine. I just think that, that understanding uh, um, that life offline is going to be kind of a rare commodity. It's going to be rare, and, and um, all I'm saying is that if we realize that in our recent modern life, there are uh, paradigm shifts that it takes time to create awareness and then sometimes too little too late, uh, we can bear the price. For example, 30 years ago, we were able to smoke on airplanes. And, uh, mothers were recommended to, to smoke while breastfeeding. And, uh, <laughs> and there was strong corporations behind there and, and nobody thought that uh, anyone could uh, really manage you know, Philip Morris. But, you know, it turns out that what everybody kind of felt that taking smoke into, into inhaling smoke mustn't feel that uh, healthy, uh, but it took 30 years. And, and I think for the developing uh, 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 generation now, 
uh, realizing that building a self uh, uh, kind of image as opposed to letting it evolve in, in an offline environment this needs a new paradigms for us, for the adults, for the educators, for the uh, decision makers to try to, to, to balance it up and, and, and uh, not realizing it a, a little bit too, too late. Yeah. And that's really true. And uh, uh, Alessandra, do you want to add something to this question? Or, uh? Well, just I don't know if I'm doing it right socially, but <laughs> for me, the key is uh, that I can't fake interest. So there are so many interesting things to, uh, to look at, to read, that I won't, uh, won't waste my time doing things that I don't like. Yeah, um, life is too short. Yeah, <laughs> life is too short. <laughs> That's true. And so when I'm interested in somebody, when I, if I comment to your uh, status on Facebook, if I uh, write you something, it's, it's because I'm, right, I'm truly interested in you. And I think this uh, uh, gets out. So. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can feel it. Uh, it's yeah. the, the the human touch we we talked. This is my uh, human touch. We talked about it, and it's very difficult to fake something on the internet. Even if a lot of people are saying the opposite, uh, it's no, very difficult. I, I it's don't. more difficult than in real life uh, to put a mask uh, online than off than offline. That's so true. And um, I'd like also to have your opinion about the two main things that I'm observing, just like a, an observer or a journalist or a whatever you like to call me, <laughs> um, with the different hat I have today. Uh, the, uh, one thing is that uh, uh, it seems to me that we are recovering, we are taking back some old passion that our parents forgot. Uh, and then maybe stuff that uh, our grannies uh, were doing. Um, I'm explaining better. In food uh, and cooking, for instance, uh, we are doing homemade bread, uh, homemade stuff, homemade pasta, a lot of them. And there is a great movement online with people that share ideas and suggestions and stuff. My mom, who is a, uh, a mom of 70s and probably was smoking while breastfeeding me <laughs> because it was normal. It's just like, are you doing you know, your own bread, you're, you're totally crazy. I'm not doing it, but I'm, a lot of people uh, is, is doing bread every day, which is uh, kind of weird uh, in a way. It's beautiful, but it's weird. I mean, thinking about 70s and 80s, uh, the last decades. This is one thing I, I'm, I'm observing. Uh, maybe it's not very true for running or, photo, or uh, photographs, uh, but uh, it's true for dancing, for instance, for, for dancing in a milonga or in a balera in Italy, we, uh, as we call it in Italy. Um, this is the first thing. The second thing I notice is that uh, um, if you don't have to fake a passion or an interest, it's because it's a real passion. You're not doing it or starting it uh, in order to find a job or in order to improve uh, your pres present job. Maybe, in a way, if you're good enough and you're doing, you know, well enough, just like Alessio is doing, someone will ask you to do it for money, right? But I think that if you start doing something, I mean, for passion, in order to maybe I can find a job or maybe someone will pay, for, will pay me for it, uh, it's a lose-lose situation. Do you agree with it? Um, uh, well, I, I think there's an interesting process that you're pointing out there. And, and uh, basically, um, the, the optimistic aspect of you know, things getting so disgustingly bad and, and, and commercial and controlled mm -hmm that y you do see kind of a reverse and kind of a, a reactive process. And, uh, um, and I think uh, the burst of independent work, uh, if it's, you know, we're, we're now a decade of, of, of real, uh, you know, ne neoliberalism kind of killing liberal arts, you know, artists, painters, dancers, poets, uh, journalists are, are basically almost out of job and uh, well, yeah. uh, far less, less funded. And, and, um, and that's the beauty that, that the, the, the creative spirit kind of bursts out exactly when uh, it's left alone and it's not controlled and people meeting uh, up to do things that are, you know, are, not, are not for profit and not for any uh, uh, creating a product and are much more about the process. And, 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 and in that sense, I'm very optimistic that we're going to see more of that kind of happening on the sides and, and hopefully becoming more and more uh, mainstream. Yeah. Without being uh, ruined and by a company saying, okay, mainstream. I can use that in my advertisement, let's use it. And that's what they try all the time. 
and more, more than this, being an artist, you're very familiar on doing stuff uh, just for, for the sake of it, right? I mean, it's your, it's your way of life. <laughs> no, I just want to add just a thing. Um, I think we need a bit of more lateral thinking. I mean, um, I didn't learn to dance tango for work, of course, but it um, taught me a lot of things about communication and I used them in my work. It was not, um, um, I didn't it for that, but uh, it, um, I learned by dancing how to lead and how to follow, and the meaning, the, the deep meaning of leading and of following. And that's a, a crucial information, uh, knowledge, when you lead a group, when you lead a team, totally. and when you are part of a team, so I think that uh, mm, all the experiences we make, uh, all the things we learn outside of our work uh, are really um, the things that build us as a, as a true person, as a mm, complex, yeah. uh, that build our personality. And yeah. so I think they are useful in a deeper way. That's true. It's not only a matter of building our online reputation. I mean, so as when sure. someone will Google us, we're just like, you know, uh, we have a good image online. And just uh, the, the building of our true personality, the, the, the inner one, which is really important. Most of all the really things important. you do with your body. Totally. Um, yes, I agree entirely with what she said. And I found out that... Um, you know, uh, it's simply that you do what you love, no? Simply that. You do what you love with passion, you have all the tools to do it, and you have all the tools to tell the story of what you're doing. And you do it because it's natural, because it's become part of our lives. Then you find out then that everything you learn is connected. Everything you do is connected and makes you the person you are, and then affects everything you do being a father, being a journalist, and then being a photographer again. Um, about money, about making this a profession or not. Um, while we were talking, um, I saw a, a tweet from Antonio Pavolini, which many of us know, which was saying uh, uh, that if I, um, my photographs aren't under um, copyrights. Mm -hmm. They are under Creative uh, Commons oh, license. license. If I... Mm, and he's saying that I, I don't need to write because this way uh, my photograph had a chance to go around. If I, mm, on the contrary, if I mm, would have used um, the copyrights, uh, no one would have known me as a photographer. So, is right. I mean, my, my photograph doesn't have any kind of a sign or... Uh, watermark or uh, Exactly, anything, watermark, yeah. or watermark or something like that, because I want them to go around. And I found out that the, in this economy of gift, where I give what I do, because I, it's bringing a message. It's talking about who I am to as many people as I can. Uh, something comes back at, at the end of the day, because it takes some time. It doesn't happen from one day to another. But then you find people that come to you and they know you that you do this yeah. for free. And they told, tell you, I love your job. I love what you do. And I wanted to pay you because you deserve it. But I want you to do this for, for me free. and me alone. Yeah. So something has changed, really. You know? Because we have. We, we, we come from a world where intellectual property, copyrights, were there to close the garden around people with creativity. Then all of this were blown away by the internet. Sometimes it was right, sometimes it wasn't. Longer, yeah. And now we are finding not only a new way of promoting ourselves, not only a new way of creating, sharing, and distributing what we're doing, what we produce as art or uh, any way, but we as people, as social, uh, as human, uh, are finding new ways, uh, new ways of connect with each other and give value to what we do and pay it. And get paid for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
j just to comment on, comment on that, I mean, um, b basically capitalism has made everything a product and, um, and the paradigm of selling this product is just advertisement and that's almost like colonizing our, you know, our consciousness. So just when, they, they, it, when commercial reality understood that you can bombard with signals, images, and, 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 and now quantify it in, a, in an exponential way, you know, that's, that's the only, only economy that we know. We're going to have to have an extremely experimental project trying to have a sustainable model for creative work, independent work. Um, do we set as a society that as a priority, the kind of the humanities, the arts? Um, that, 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 that needs an experimental breakthrough. So it was, is it, uh, can, can we imagine a world without, without advertisements? You know, what kind of economy could that be? Uh, so these are big questions. Now, does it have to be uh, uh, sustainable? Or does it, or, or, or should it uh, uh, be independent? I think that that's a very big question and I, and I enjoy to hear your, uh, your point of views about that. Yeah, fine. They told me <laughs> that we have some, some time for questions, uh, 10 minutes for questions, a lot of them. So uh, it's, uh, it's good to, to give some time uh, before closing the panel. You can shout, yeah. <laughs> you can shout there. <laughs> Let it allow. Yeah. Me too, anyway. Daniel, when you were speaking a little earlier, I just got a couple of things to say and then a question. You were talking about direction and change in human behavior and I'm incredibly interested in that. I didn't know I was, but I am now. You talked about passion. I'd like to add to that expression and perceived enjoyment. Things seem to have changed because of the web and act, the access to so much stuff immediately. And I think in some respects we all agree that it's diluted how we perceive things really are. Now, I don't think it's bad, good, or indifferent, but an example is, I watch a film with my daughter. It should be kind of a family occasion, but she can't be watching the film and texting people and doing all these multiple other things. So did we enjoy things more fully because we were concentrating on them better before we had outside interferences that came from the ability that's online? Taking it to the other extreme, you're absolutely right. The whole food thing is, You've got data, you get stuff, and then you do something physically. The moment you do something physically, you've got to do it, and you have to concentrate on it, and it's incredibly enriching. So I think there's a question of measurement and balance, and also that ideal of loss of focus. And I'm not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent, but I would be interested in your view. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a good uh, point, because um, it's an absolutely known fact that choice does not equal happiness. That's such a basic notion that, you know, uh, Western society offers us all these uh, options and, and, and we're not more, ha more happy. You know, we're not happier people. Um, and the sense, the quality of doing one thing at a time, being present, um, Focusing on, 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 on one thing and, and kind of having kind of a, a complete process with it. Again, that's a quality that um, uh, you know we can all recall from, from previous experiences. So that's a challenge that I think it's a, it's, it's, it's our obligation to 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 um, to create these conditions and this environment for kids for education system to understand that multitasking comes with a price. We all. Uh, you know, we do uh, several jobs and we all enjoy this kind of adrenaline rush to close a deal with that company, to create a, a, a lecturing opportunity there and to uh, send our wife uh, uh, kind of a, a nice uh, couple of words and, and, you know, we feel this kind of augmented uh, 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 kind of uh, almost kind of superhero feeling. But um, the notion of, 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 of multitasking is an illusion. There is a cognitive and, and, and kind of like a, a, a price for changing from one task to another. It's really this, the, the, the aspect of, uh, uh, um, uh, well, just 
pure mental processes that, uh, which is called recovering period. There is a recovering period from one task to another. So I think, uh, absolutely, if, uh, but, uh, you know, creating experiences that are uninterrupted. I think the, the key word is disruption. I mean, what do we expect? You know, we create a reality that is constantly disruptive, you know, more than 1919, so, um, and, and, it, and it's actually so easy. You know, pe you know people ask me if I would, was the 16th person to ask, I would have a very clear answer. It's me and Louis C.K., you know, just, just, just say no, you know, that's easy. Uh, I negotiate with my wife. My wife is a singer and, and you know, she needs to promote. She has, you know, a, a, a hobby that became a profession. She's, she's published and she has, she has an audience and all that. But, you know, uh, uh, we have to learn to stop. Now, Israeli society, as opposed to, you know, our French experience last week and also here, you know, I, I love how you give, give one uh, a dish at a time. And in, Israeli, in Israel, that doesn't look like that. It's all boom. All together, we work. I get students uh, uh, text me at, at, at midnight and uh, uh, six o'clock in the morning, I'm already kind of texting them back. And, 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 and the idea of, 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 of stopping, of kind of creating these uh, 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 boundaries is, 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 uh, is going to be a quality, a true quality that when we realize the price, we'll, we'll actually start practicing it more and more. So I hope that answers a bit and reflects on your question. Um, I have a question for Alessandra about the tribe. After all, we belong to a tribe. The, the, the state of the net is a tribe. We, we, we all know that. But when you enter into a different passion in the tango, you enter into the tango tribe. It's not just a matter of uh, doing something different and then matching it like I do with music and I match what I learned from music into another. It's called uh, cross-fertilization. Okay. But I want your opinion about tribes because after all, if you enter really into the passion of something, the tango, you really enter into a tribe with different rituals, with different rhythm, different languages. And after all, it allows you to change completely the way you think. Is that true? Is this what you really do when you, when you, when you do the tango? Yes, it is. I think one of the beautiful things of having many interests, of living many passions, is that you get to know uh, a lot of different people. And you get to look things for, uh, from different points of view. Because it, that's true, every tribe has um, its own uh, um, uh, right ways of doing things, uh, language, uh, uh, jergo, uh, jargon, uh, uh, a specific. Uh, uh, um, so if you notice, I can't uh, talk about tango in English. I, I must use the proper words, uh, milonga, practicas, maestro, um, because it's, um, and, and I really find it interesting uh, to study how people relate, um, how uh, tribes uh, build themselves. Uh, and it's a sort of, not entomology, but etology. Uh, <laughs> And when you uh, um, learn to read the relationships between uh, um, tribes uh, and how in a group of people um, leadership emerges, because there are leadership, alliances, um, oh, competition, predation as well, and that's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's an anthropology moment. I mean, you, you learn a lot also observing. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Luigi Cornaglia, I'm a web entrepreneur. I have a question for Mr. Landau. Um, I go in schools and I also work with teenagers and uh, the funny thing is that in the last two years they kept calling me from earlier and earlier. So I started with working with 15, 16 years old and now they call me even from uh, fifth, sixth grade. So quinta elementare and prima media. Uh, the question is, since we experiencing how much uh, digital technologies impact our lives and uh, they even change the, the way our brain uh, works and uh, we are expecting in 30, 50 years like sort of new generations of humans, how should school and um, school system uh, face this uh, major challenge? And uh, if you have any suggestion, well, because in Italy we have 
um, the average age of teachers is kind of high, so around 50 years old. So what we try to do, for instance, is also working with teachers in order to develop new, new strategies and new tools for, uh, for digital didact didactic. And uh, yes, if you have any suggestion or if you have any comment about this. Um, my immediate uh, uh, answer how two schools uh, need to change, how they can change, is obviously I, I don't know. You know it's it's uh, uh, one of the biggest questions uh, educational technology companies and initiatives are trying to figure out. Um, uh, from uh, uh, experiment in Tilburg, Holland, where you have the Steve Jobs uh, school, where it's uh, only iPads, to uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner schools, uh, basically rejecting technology completely. Um, I, I guess we should really observe closely what they achieve there and what they achieve uh, there. And, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I pointed out a bit of the, the significance and, and the quality of kind of keeping technology a bit uh, further away. Um, I'll give you just one example. Uh, one of the groups I'm, 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 I'm working with is 10-year-old uh, um, kids uh, um, addicted to pornography. Now, I don't know how many of you know that, but you go, oh, wow, is that, is that, is that, is that, does that exist? What did you think? I mean, <laughs> you give them smartphones and that happens. So, um, and you know, we can't, we didn't protect our generation that built up internet in the mid 90s. We had all these hopes for internet to be more creative, to be more efficient, to work less. You know, obviously that, that didn't pan out as, as we planned. Um, um, so, so we have this exposed uh, uh, reality, and the only points uh, I, uh, I can uh, uh, help for a teacher today is, is, is this aspect of the significant adult. You are significant. What I, uh, I would offer the, the, the education system is to empower the teachers. Sure, they have to uh, learn more about you know, these environments, uh, speak the language, um, but we're, we're, we're putting a lot of efforts in, into this question. So again, between the extreme connectivity to the extreme kind of uh, uh, putting the uh, uh, technology away, uh, putting the, 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 the persona of the teacher in the center and, and, and not forgetting that the human contact and the kind of, uh, uh, there's this saying that all a kid needs is you know, one grown up to believe in him and to uh, treat this not as a cliche, but really as, as something that can, can affect uh, um, um, this confused uh, student. Okay, I guess we, we have to close the panel, so sorry yep. about it. Thank you so much for your, your attention, all the questions. Thanks to them.